the yeah. economy yeah. is changing. So can you walk us through a little bit, notebook, a little bit of things to do to alleviate tension as you come down? Write these as bullets, please. When you have, when you have tension in front of younger students, they're going to read that as being mad. And then they're gonna get, <coughs> then they're gonna get inhibited. inhibited in what they play. Like with the timpani, because I was standing back there watching. And the cue for the timpani, everything you did body-wise was, was beautiful. But your eyes and your mouth, your mouth did this, like that, like almost an insistence of doing play. Do it right or else. You know, do it right or else. And then that's <laughs> gonna make them nervous. Or instead of beautiful, just, here we go. You know, just brighten in the eyes and just, and, and, you know, and it's different. There are some pieces that require that insistence and they get urgent to you, but not the beginning piece. Yes, ma'am. Plus, you can give yourself health-related issues if you're always tense. Mm -hmm. Same thing when you play an instrument and when you conduct. Your shoulders will start to hurt. Your arms will start to hurt. So relieving that tension will help with that. Yes? Okay, so what do you do in your day-to-day -day routine to keep that tension out of your body? Because I carry it all right to me, me too. when I play, when I conduct, when I'm speaking in front of people, like I'm like this all the time, what do I do? Breathing, you've gotta take big, big deep breaths mm -hmm. and then bring your shoulders down. <coughs> that way you won't show tension here. Okay. Um, you can be tense here, just like them. Um, but yeah, breathing really helps me. Okay. And, and the, more you, the more you do it outside of, of the podium, sort of the, the better you get on the podium. You know, walk around and just, relaxing and try and mimic the movements like drama people if you ever do drama a lot of times they will get into <coughs> character and they'll be in character for long periods of time so that they get comfortable being in character well if the only time we conduct and use the baton and use those movements is on the podium then of course you're going to feel different you step <laughs> on the podium and it's like ah oh, you know now I'm different now I'm conducting use use those use those motions off the podium that was really good that was a really valid point you just said. It's like exclamation point that one. Yeah. Because I think that one is really helpful. We need to do that. Yeah, sometimes you get sometimes you get liquid gems that come out every now and then. Just, mm -hmm. you know. That's that's mm -hmm. a really valid one. Because I think that happens for all of us. We step up on the podium and it's like and it's different. And there's a there's a book called Rehearsing the Band. I don't know what edition it's in. Um, but get that book. It's like Jack Williams, uh, John Williamson. Yeah, it's got like it's got like Fennell and and Whitwell. It's got all these. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the different. first one that I have. Yeah. It's like a black cover. And mm -hmm. what I did was, anytime I heard something or did something, like even today, uh, it's it's like mine is like this thick. I'll just write down. Oh, I said something that was really cool, and I'll write it down, and then I'll stick it in the book. And in my band room, we actually have a whiteboard like this. But if it's something that we want to remember forever, we write it on the whiteboard like. Dr. Ross has come in and seen my whiteboard. I've got stuff that was eight years ago we wrote right there and it's still on the whiteboard. And every now and then we, we refer to it. Because you, you, they, they often say, you know, great band directors will forget more. Like, I forgot more about band than you'll ever learn. Well, don't forget the stuff. Write it down. Have it in writing forever. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>